hello students uh, welcome back so as uh, we are discussing uh, module 5 that is a uh, basic processing unit so in that today i am going to discuss uh, hardwired control so this concept is very important here so uh, to execute instructions the processor must have some means of generating the control signals that are needed in the proper sequence so this we know already right here to execute instructions the processor must have uh, some means of generating the control signals which are needed in the proper sequence means in uh, some order in the proper order here the computer designers use a wide variety of techniques to solve this problem the approaches which are used that are fall into one of the two categories one is a hardwired control and other one is micro programmed control so i'll discuss each of these techniques in detail starting with the hardwired control in today's uh, class now consider the sequence of control signals as uh, it was uh, given in in the most of the previous classes so consider the sequence of control signals here each step in this sequence is completed in one clock period so a counter may be used to keep track of the control steps which is uh, shown in this particular figure here you can see a counter which is used to keep track of the control steps so here you can see the different control steps here so each state or count of this counter it correspond to one control step the required control signals are determined by the information like contents of the control step counter then contents of the instruction register that is the IR right then contents of the condition code flags so here you can see condition codes then external input or external input signals such as uh, mfc and uh, interrupt request so this is our uh, some information here so the required control signals are determined by uh, this information now uh, to gain insight into the structure of control unit we start with a simplified view of hardware which is involved here uh, the decoder or encoder block as you can see here decoder or encoder block so this decoder or encoder block is a combinational circuit that generate the required control outputs depending on the state of all its inputs now uh, by separating the decoding and encoding functions we obtain uh, the more detailed block diagram so which is shown here here uh, we have separated the decoder and the encoder block the step decoder it provides a separate signal line for each step or uh, the time slot in the control sequence similarly the output of the instruction decoder it consists of a separate line for each machine instruction for any instruction which is loaded in the IR that is in uh, instruction register so one of the output lines that is INS1 to INSM that is from INS1 to INSM so which is set to 1 and all other lines that are set to 0 the input signals to the encoder block that are combined to generate the individual control signals that is uh, uh, y in pc out add and and so on so these are what some control signals here an example of how the encoder generates uh, z in control signal for the processor organization is shown in this particular figure so here you can see uh, how the encoder generates a Z in control signal for the processor organization 
so this circuit implements the logic function that is uh, zn equal to t1 plus t6 dot add plus t4 dot br plus and so on so like this it will generate the zn control signal so these are all different instructions uh, add instruction uh, branch instruction and all right so this signal is asserted during the time slot t1 for all the instructions and during uh, time slot t6 for an add instruction right and during uh, t4 time slot for an unconditional branch instruction and so on like this it will generate zn control signal here the logic function for zn is derived from the control sequences right now take the another example so this gives a circuit which will generate the end control signal that is end so it will generate end control signal from the logic function that is end equal to t7 dot add plus t pi dot br plus in bracket t pi dot n plus t4 dot n bracket complete dot uh, brn plus and so on like this so this circuit will generate the end control signal from the logic function this from this logic function here the end signal starts a new instruction fetch cycle by resetting the control step counter which is set to its starting value here uh, this uh, a detailed block diagram that is uh, separating the decoding and encoding function right so that uh, diagram it contains the another control signal which is called run as you can see here so here you can see one more control signal that is uh, run right here uh, when this uh, run control signal is set to 1 then the run causes the counter to be incremented by 1 at the end of every clock cycle and when the run is equal to 0 then counter stops counting like this it works so this is needed whenever uh, WMFC signal is issued to cause the processor to wait for reply from the memory here the control hardware which is uh, shown in uh, the previous diagrams so they can be viewed as a state machine that changes from one state to other in every clock cycle depending on the contents of the instruction register the condition codes and the external inputs here the output of the state machine are the control signals and the sequence of operations carried out by this machine is determined by wiring of the logic elements hence the name hardwired here a controller that uses this approach can operate at high speed however it has a little flexibility and complexity of the instruction set that it can implement which is limited so this is all about the hardwired control so now i am going to discuss a complete processor right here a complete processor can be designed using the structure which is shown in this figure this is what the structure of a complete processor or organization of a complete processor so this structure has an instruction unit that fetches the instruction from an instruction cache or from the main memory when the desired instruction are not already in the cache so before that it will check whether the instruction is already there in cache otherwise it will fetch that instruction from the instruction cache or from the main memory it has separate processing units to deal with the integer data and the floating point data and each of these units can be organized which are shown in the previous speaker here a data cache is inserted between these units and the main memory 
using separate cache for the instructions and data is a common practice in a processor today and other processor use a single cache that store both the instructions and data the processor is connected to the system bus and hence to the rest of the computer by means of a bus interface although we have shown just one integer and one floating point unit in this particular figure here a processor may include several units of each type to increase the potential for concurrent operations the way in which the multiple units can be organized to increase the rate of instruction execution so that are discussed in the later chapters so this is about uh, hardwired control and complete processor thank you